I'm gonna take this little view to the top. How's that? I'm gonna eat this. I'm gonna eat this thing. Sorry. I'm sorry. This 20th anniversary thing is stressing me out. Throughout history, one human's joke has become another's classic. Sometimes, classics remain so profound that they deserve a revival. These are cult classic redux. First search result, Homestar Runner. The brothers chaps started working on their cult online sensation as a joke. That joke is now celebrating its 20th anniversary with millions of fans around the world. There's no elevator pitch. It's a bunch of weird, non-human, non-animal characters talking to one another at length. We gotta head for the hills! All those hills? I always thought they was bushes. Figurative. But actually, I never walked a couple of feet to find out for sure. Been a figuratively. Hey, let's do it right now. It's being figurative. <laughs> Bush. It's pretty amazing that uh, something that we did out of boredom 20 years ago has become or became such a part of my life. So Homestar Runner started in 1996. Went to a bookstore to look at kids' books and they were all terrible. So we went home and decided to make our own. I mean, when we were making children's books in the early to mid 90s, it's like you did what was there. And then as different computer software became available, I mean, starting with Mario Paint, which is very restrictive, but at the time it was great. Like you could animate a character. And at the time that was sort of amazing. Making little Mario Paint cartoons was, was fun, but we could tell that there was a lot more the characters were wanted to do and say. So then when we discovered Flash in the late 90s, the light bulb really went off. The first thing we kind of dusted off, we were really just trying to teach ourselves Flash, but Homestar seemed like the go-to because we'd already established them and liked those guys and wanted to see them move a little more. So we started putting the animations online and somehow over a period of months, hundreds of thousands of people were watching them. Homestarrunner.com welcome speech. Take one. Action. Oh, hey yo. Welcome to Homestarrunner.net. It's dot com. Oh, right. Homestarrunner.net. It's dot com. Cut. One of the, my favorite things about doing the website was that we could always do whatever we wanted with it. Oh dang. Oh dang muffins. Oh dang muffins pie. Oh dang muffins pie a la mode. This is gonna be the best April Fool's Day prank call ever. At the time we thought there was enough out there. Um, and I remember you would watch this two minute flash animated cartoon on the internet. And then at, afterwards there would roll the credits and it's like, wait a minute, 60, took 60 people to make that and like four sound guys. And it's like, we sort of are doing, can do the same thing with just two of us. And so here we are 20 years later, still making this ridiculous cartoon and people are still watching it. Let's see what kind of old crap we have in here. This is a heavy box. Drawing old toys. Here's uh, the King of Town as a member of ZZ Top. <laughs> For the 20th anniversary, we wanted to do something that sort of celebrated the beginning. So we looked through some old sketchbooks and a bunch of old scripts and stuff like that to see if there was something that we had forgotten about. This, we could do this. Yeah. We could do this, Mike. What's, this a good, uh, what's a good, this for? A good picture I took of myself. This is all too new. All the stuff I've Here's... got is like too late. Here's something. Page 16. Start with page 16. That's the second story. The uh, Homestar Runner goes for the gold. Should we do like animate this in the in the classic style? Found a treasure trove of stuff from from way before the website from 1996. And we found in there the unproduced second children's book, uh, Homestar Runner Goes for the Gold. We had no idea it was still laying around somewhere. We should do it um, either in storybook style mm -hmm. or Mario Paint. We could dust off the SNES. That'd be fun. This is there. true. Anytime that we find something old like that, uh, we would love to exploit it. So uh, it seems like perfect timing. <laughs> Which was your favorite episode? Of what? Which was your favorite episode? You're a bad interview. Hey, Mike. guys, I was given a pile. You're, you're a pile, a pile Mike. of scrawl. We are given a pile right now, and it is you in that chair. You're the pile.
Using an unproduced script written in 1996, Mike and Matt Chapman are now trying to recreate their original production process for a new 20th anniversary special. Once we get the idea, we'll talk about it, you know, for an hour or so and sort of get some bare bones ideas of how, how an episode would work. Well, the first event is running, the second event is swimming, and the third event, event is, is flying. <laughs> it's flying, of course. The triathlon. <laughs> Strong side moves away, they say what's wrong, he got kicked off and replaced with didgeridoo. Is this the only drawing of didgeridoo we have or are there more in there? So this, this is the only one. He, he says tee hee. <laughs> he's got walrus he's got fangs. <laughs> this makes no sense. Yeah, that's why we didn't make it. <laughs> it's got I'm, so more glad, work. I'm so glad, glad we work. decided to make it now. Yeah, I know. The most difficult part of making an episode is probably the early stage where we're trying to just get the idea going. The next step, I think, is to do a table read and see just how broken it is. Yeah, we gotta figure out we should either play it completely straight and make it in all its terribleness, or try to make a few changes and make it make some sort of sense. No, it shouldn't make any sense. Well, but not as make long sense, as we but be entertaining. Mike and I have been working together since we were both very little. And we definitely do the finish each other's sentences thing. So to an outside observer, it would probably be pretty baffling to just be like, "Wait, you never? You, there was no point. You never got to the end." And we'd be like, "Yeah, we know. We know. We're good. Move, let's move on." So we are going to do a little table read of the second ever Homestar Runner story. What, what, what do you mean? It's called Homestar Runner and the Brothers Strong. Oh, that sounds pretty good. It's the introduction of um, Strong Mad and Strong Sad. Didgeridoo was being passed by the high flying Strong Sad. He's on your team. Didgeridoo? Yeah, remember he replaced Strong Sad. That's right. Yeah. All the teams lined up for the first event. And ready, set, go. Strong Mad gets an early lead and wins. Yes! Yeah, so. In your face! So, at the table read, I firmly believed that I was probably the only good thing about it. That script was a steaming pile. My hands are getting real tired, Mike. How are you doing, Matt? Um, I think? think this, I'd like to go on the record that this is um, terrible. Yeah, that's not uh, very good. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's rough. It's a it's rough scene. It's not very scene. entertaining. No. Um, but do you think we can make it into something that's somewhat entertaining? Uh, maybe if we use the same technology that was available to us when this was written in okay. 1996. 96, yeah. yeah. It'll um, cover up some of the shortcomings of the story and the characters. Yeah, it's like story, story spackle. <laughs> I'm gonna tell these guys. Okay, 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 you let them know. All right, guys. What's the deal, Mike? So we're gonna- That was a heated discussion going on down there. Yeah, right. So we're gonna make this. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it! Yeah, it's sold. It's been greenlit. All right! Yeah, greenlit to Mario Paint. Whoa! Whoa! Yeah. That's the best! Mm -hmm. I've never looked better than in Mario Paint. <laughs> Should we draw a didgeridoo first, since we know? Yeah, we're gonna know. He's, the, he's the new asset. Yeah, the new. All right. I would say just like make his arms wave, maybe. Yeah, it's so <laughs> restricted. No way! <laughs> this is this opened up so... new worlds to us. I just wing it, yeah. Yeah, I'm just eyeball it. Let's go. Wing it. Oh, That's look so at that. Good. And we'll just give him the classic home star background. The whole thing is just going to be singles. It's like all single shots of everyone. There's never going to yeah. be more than two characters <laughs> right. in a scene at the same time. It seems like it might be way more work than it's worth. Mm -hmm. We took a bad idea and we, we made, made it, it worse. worse. Yeah. It's, uh, so what if we did it in Flash but did it in Storybook? That'd be good. good. That's good. That'd be good. Sorry, sorry, Mario Paint. At the time, we thought Mario Paint was a revelation, and uh, we were we were animators as a result of using it. And now it looks like um, uh, a death sentence. As Mike and Matt begin to finish the special 20th anniversary episode of their cult internet cartoon, they come to realize an ancient truth. Limitations are often one's greatest asset. I say that to join the team, strong lad. <laughs> <laughs> so that we can do anything. 
<laughs> that should happen a lot. <laughs> his, teeth, his teeth should just fall out every scene. What's kept us going for so long has been that ability to do whatever, that if we burn out a little bit on this character or this feature, that we can just do anything we want. I have no idea if anybody likes that variety or not, but for us, I think it, it helps us keep fresh and keep excited and, and have fun. Let's make a new song. Yeah, Let's just start from, the old one. yeah. start from scratch. Now, I don't think it feels completely like thrown together, but there's a homemade quality. I mean, I think it's hard to nail exactly what it means, but I think people can tell that there's an intimacy and that it was not done by a production, by a huge team of 60 people. I'm going. Should I just go? We're not gonna do it line by line, right? No, just go. Okay. And I think it's not just the animation. I mean, obviously the animation's a little bit crude. Sometimes the music can be a little bit sloppy, but I think just the, the writing, all that stuff comes together. It's a nice little package. There's a charm in there somehow that was obviously not intended. Strong Sun was now an all-star. I don't want to tell you this, Matt, but I'm going to tell you this. It had stopped recording. <laughs> it's great news. It's yeah. great news for me. And rolling. Oh, man, dog man, you're not going to believe this thing. Wait till you see this thing. This thing is going to change your life, blow your mind, wipe your nose. Then shut the dang up and let's see it already. The Homestar Runner and the Brother Straw, a.k.a. Homestar Runner goes for the gold. AKA old glue turns gross and brown if you let it sit for 20 years. As far as I can tell, after making Homestar cartoons for 20 years, <laughs> the future of cartooning will probably come from someone or something that's trapped in the corner of their parents' basement doing dumb animal voices to entertain themselves more than anyone else, probably. That was some premium grade A, old Homestar Runner crap. But hey look, I found my old whistle. Beep, boop, boop, beep. So begins a great new era in Homestar Runner talk. Beep, 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 boop. Oh. Beep, 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 beep. Fantastic. Beep, beep. I sure hope this continues for the next 20 years. It will, beep, 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 boop. <laughs>